Hi there everyone, my first go live video. So um, this is being good to your body and as you can see I'm out in my little garden with my sunglasses on. I hope you don't mind. Hello. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. So I put up a little poll on the group uh, because I wanted to know all about you and the obstacles that you're facing. And the three top things that came back was the emotional eating was an obstacle, time and boredom eating. Those were the three top ones. And so I wanted to address this in this live chat. I'm hoping this will make things more interactive and you'll enjoy it. Um, now, I don't believe that any of us are meant to look the same. I think we're all meant to be different. But I do believe that we, we should have the body we desire and that we should be healthy, healthy, healthy. And that is what we are after. Get a bit windy. So we're going to talk about being good to you. So I have done recently some videos on what is the difference between my really, really successful clients and my clients that struggle. And the difference is they know themselves very, very well. So when I put these little um, polls up and I ask you a million questions, there is a method in my madness. I am wanting um, to get to the bottom of any issues, but also I'm wanting to um, kind of get you to recognize yourself, to get to know yourself really well. And usually, I expect a few tantrums on the journey of transform because looking at yourself in the mirror facing yourself is sometimes the hardest thing we can do but also the most amazing and best thing we can do when we're looking to get results yeah so let's just go through the top three things that came out so I want to address emotional eating now there is a difference between comfort eating and sometimes emotional eating comfort eating is when you eat because you feel a bit down or a bit stressed and the food actually gives you um, some comfort and makes you happy or stress uh, relieves the stress yeah other types of emotional eating is a form of self-punishment yeah so this is where people binge and um, kind of really stuff themselves in order they don't feel good it doesn't make them feel good it actually makes them feel worse but the, there is a binging and people can do this with various different things they can do it with food they can do it with drink they can do it with smoking they can do it, you know they can do it with all kinds of things um, so are you a comfort eater and it is in your searching for comfort to soothe you for a few minutes or are you emotional eater are you punishing yourself um, because you're not happy about something now when it comes to the comfort eating there are other ways to get comfort people <laughs> there are many other ways to get comfort and with the emotional eating, I always say that if I give you a slap in the face and asked you for a tenner, would you give it to me? You wouldn't, right? So if you're going to punish yourself, why would your body do anything for you? Why would it do as it's told? Why would it lose weight? Why would it shape up? If you want something out of someone, you've got to be nice to them and that is no different to your body. The other thing is, if there is an emotion that you're trying to suppress, you don't want to feel it, so you are grounding yourself with food so that you're suppressing that emotion. This is where people can get upset in 1962, be suppressing that emotion with food for 20 years and end up 25 stones several years later. So we don't want you to suppress that emotion. People fear feeling. Don't fear feeling, it's what makes us human. It was, it's what makes us us. So if you suddenly get an attack of the emotional munchies, I want you to sit and I want you to feel it. Feel that emotion. What you will find is that it will dissipate after just a mere few minutes and it will disappear and you will no longer feel hungry. So this is a big thing and I've had a lot of clients make a lot of progress with this, a lot. So I want you to feel your emotions. I want you to be human. You're not a, a robot. I don't mind if you freak out on me. Many of you have. 
many of you have had knee-jerk reactions. You've rung me up, you've read, this is, you know, I'm not happy, this isn't right, da, da, da. You've kicked off. I don't mind that because I know that it's coming out. So feel your emotions, be human. Um, comfort yourselves with other things. You can have a nap, you can pamper yourselves, you can get a love from a loved one, you can um, be more loving in your life so that you're not getting that comfort from food you know so there's other things that you can do that way yeah as well so Duffy's just going shopping bye bye to Duffy right <laughs> so I, I really want you to have a, a look at this if you're an emotional eater you can find if you need a love from your partner or your children that is going to give you more than any food can give you and it's going to lower your stress levels too if you are punishing yourself in some way you've got to ask yourself why and if i said i hit you in the face and asked you for a tenner would you give it to me your body's exactly the same so if you want your body to do something for you you've got to be nice to your body um and finally with the emotional eating um if you are suppressing an emotion, whether that be it stress or something more serious, I need you to feel it and let it go. Um, if you don't feel it, it's like a messenger knocking, knocking on your head, uh, saying, acknowledge me, acknowledge me, acknowledge me, and the emotional hunger will never end. As soon as you acknowledge that emotion, it'll disappear, I can promise you. Now, the biggest thing that I always come across, which was second on the list, is time time is always an issue we're busy busy people we work like mad we party like mad we've got busy lives filled with kids and husbands and partners and, and family and all kinds of things I don't debate what I ask you to do is often simple and doesn't take a lot of time so I have to release my emotions when when you say to me I've just no time I've no time to do this and I go, I gave you a two minute workout. I gave you a three minute workout. I asked you to drink water. The stuff that I give you to do doesn't take a lot of time. So stop standing in your own way. Stop doing it, right? Don't even tell me you haven't got three minutes before you go to bed. Don't even tell me you haven't got the very small amount of time that I ask you to do things. Small things done consistently will make massive differences. I've seen it time and time again. This is how clients that have lost 12 stones with me, that's my biggest loser, 12 stones. And she didn't do it by doing crazy outlandish things. She just took small things and did them consistently on a regular basis. And she lost 12 stones. This is crazy, right? So I need you to take this time thing off because what you're doing is you're giving yourself limitations limitations and why shouldn't you give some time to you you deserve it and you deserve the health and the body that you desire so don't even tell me that time is an issue when I give you a workout for three minutes now if you have workouts that are too long tell me let me know I'll change it yeah I'm here to adapt it to your life so you don't have to kind of put up with with a longer workout if it doesn't work for you in your life yeah it has to work for you it has to make it you know accessible in your life so um so yeah when someone says oh i just didn't have time to do it anna i go don't even give me that i gave you three minutes you had time to complain to me you've been on the phone to me for 20 minutes <laughs> so the time issue we need to address we need to get firm on that tough love tough love from anna yeah and then finally, we have the boredom eating. Boredom eating is really interesting uh, and usually is kind of joined with watching TV or doing some kind of mund mundane kind of habit that, you, that we do. So the boredom eating is just something to do and it's not mindful so this tells me that the body wants action it wants to move it wants to do something because it is bored you're not just mentally or emotionally bored you are physically bored yeah and this is where the boredom eating comes in if you are bored you need to do one of two things 
you need to either stimulate your mind or you need to stimulate your body so if you're boredom eating it means you could be mentally bored so then we need to kind of address that in your life we need to stimulate it when you're working hard you don't even think about food i've often been working online and uh, working away and uh, and i don't even think about eating because my mind is stimulated i'm thinking about other things yeah when you are bored you are not being mindful yeah so you can throw a thousand calories down your neck without even thinking about it so when it comes to being mindful we've got to stimulate the mind or stimulate the body so you can either do my two minute workout <laughs> or you can um, stimulate your mind by doing something and there are a million things that you can do um, so I want you to assess this if you suddenly feel like boredom eating you don't have to get up and go running around the block I won't stop you you can do if you like it'll definitely stimulate the body um, you can get up and do something definitely to take your mind off things it will work very well um, but sometimes you I'm too tired to do another workout and I'm just bored then you need to stimulate your mind so watching something like Coronation Street easy easy watching is not for you let's get a bit of csi in there let's stimulate that mind put on a horror <laughs> we want to make the mind work we want to interest the mind um, and that will put a stop to boredom eating you all know when you're in the cinema and you're watching some nice film you just do that with the popcorn don't you bang 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 it really means that the mind's not that stimulated and the film is pretty pants now think of a film that you loved think of a film that you were gripped you were on the edge of your seat the one i think of which kills me every time and i only watched it once and i'll never be able to watch it again which is kevin bacon in sleepers do you remember that one? Oh my god i remember going to the cinema to see that i did not eat or drink all the way through that it was a horrendous it was a great film but a horrendous film um and I didn't even touch what I'd bought. Why? Because my mind was definitely stimulated. So how much you eat at the cinemas can probably tell you how good the film was. <laughs> if you've eaten a massive bucket of popcorn and loads of drinks and sweets, then the film was pants. Yeah? Whereas if you've really enjoyed it and it's stimulated, you've probably not eaten as much. So I want you to think about this do you know yourself and if you know yourself well you need to be good to you and good to your body you know how you work better than i do yeah so for instance i'll tell you about me i am an evening trainer yeah i like to train in the evening i know that about myself this is from years of doing shows i'm much i'm not a morning person at all yeah also, I much prefer to drink alcohol than to eat um, high calorie foods. That's the way I am. You know, I much prefer that. I am a social animal. So if I'm going to go off track, I'm much more likely to do it when I'm being social. Yeah. Also, I am a woman who likes attention. I guess you find that very hard to believe. <laughs> so if i'm needing comfort i will go to duffy or i'll go to my family and i'm very kind of direct about it i need a hug now i need some loving i need some you know kind of attention and i've learned over the years to be more direct with that you know um and this is why people get animals pets oscar always loves me <laughs> and i get a lot of comfort from him as well you know so do you know yourself and if you know yourself you can really use this to your advantage so you can put a health system regime program into place to suit you uniquely so you've probably been listening to this as time has been going on and stuff um, I want you to re-watch this video and I want you to address the emotional eating and what kind of an emotional eater are you and once you've identified that you can use what I've uh, told you to really make a difference to your emotional eating uh, with the time aspect don't even tell me you don't have two or three minutes two or three minutes a day will make a massive difference if you go for it in those two or three minutes so time is a limitation that we put 
on our own minds, in our own minds. So time is the excuse that makes me stressed <laughs> because I work around time all the time. I am a crazy, you know, lady when it comes to time. So I can, if you want a little workout, I can give you a baby workout that will make massive differences. Um, so that is... Um, a big thing you can disagree with me if you like just comment below um, and then also with the comfort eating if you need comfort go out and find it in different things you might just need to pamper yourself you might just get, need to give yourself some more time you might just need um, some love from your family and friends from your pet whatever that noodle that you're throwing down your neck will not love you it won't it will not love you the sweeties that you've eaten will not love you but there are plenty of people animals and little things that you can do for yourself showing self-love that will make a massive difference to your kind of um and um, now health. i did a little poll in the group interesting very interesting so the biggest thing um out of the poll that we did in this group was the main thing that was the obstacles towards your health and diet and weight loss and, and toning and everything was your inner demons. Do I need to call an exorcist? <laughs> so your inner demons are causing um, you problems at the moment and I find this really interesting uh, I find the terminology interesting and thanks for whoever added that uh, because it really resonated with a lot of people so thanks to you, whoever put that in there that's great um, inner demons I am fascinated by the terminology because inner demons suggests that there are things inside of you that are not of you that have got nothing to do with you that are excess to you that are outside of you um, and that they have possessed you and um, are causing mayhem in your pursuit of your health goals. Um, so I do indeed find this very interesting. I want you to embrace your inner demons as your new found best friends. It is you. It is you uniquely. It is your inner core. It is your body and your soul talking to you. These inner demons are not demons at all. They should be called inner angels. Because what they're doing is they're trying to send you messages every day. Every day they're sending you messages. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to listen to your inner demons. What are your inner demons saying? Are they saying get some sugar because I'm knackered are they saying you don't want to do this you really just want to go to sleep that's a common one are they saying there's no point trying anyway because nothing will work yeah your inner demons are your negative self-talk so this could also be self-esteem issues you deserve the body and the health that you want it is crucial that you understand this, but only you can believe this. I can believe it all I want for you, but only you will believe that, uh, only you have to really believe that you deserve this. Um, your inner demons is your inner self sending you messages. So I have to ask you to listen from a mature perspective, yeah? Now, if your inner demon is saying something that really isn't true and quite childish I'll always be fat that's just the way it is you know you've got to imagine that's quite a childish thing and you've got to take a mature perspective and go this inner demon is talking rubbish and I need to ignore that message delete yeah or is your inner demon is actually an inner angel actually giving you some severe messages so when your inner demon is asking for sugar, uh, sometimes the body will ask for sugar when it's stressed. Sometimes the body will ask for sugar when it's tired. Sometimes the body will ask for sugar when it's in poor digestive health. I know this because sugar aggravates the gut and will make you go to the loo. The body's clever. It's really clever. So if it's sending you a message 
what is your inner demon saying? It could be an inner angel actually telling you what you truly need, yeah? And in that case, then you might need to address your sleep, you might need to address your energy, you might need to address uh, your digestive health. It just depends what your inner demon is saying, yeah? Um, if it's negative self-help, oh, I've gone off, there I am. If it's negative self-help, um, then we want to throw that inner demon out the window. We don't want to be listening to him, he knows nothing. Because it's not based in reality, it's not real you know so how many of you have talked yourself out of doing something you actually really want to do out of fear or anxiousness yeah so you've been invited to a barbecue uh, where they're gonna have a bouncy castle but you've convinced yourself by the end of it that if you go you'll end up drunk and heavy and bouncing on the bouncy castle and you'll break your leg <laughs> so people sometimes get invited to do all kinds of things that are really quite gorgeous but in their mind they've convinced themselves it's going to be something else and the negative self-talk gets in and suddenly they're living half a life and they're not getting anywhere fast with their health goals so i'm asking you to live and to ignore your negative talks and also listen to your inner angels not your inner demons and actually acknowledge what your body is trying to say to people the biggest thing I come across and I was on BBC Radio Leeds this week talking about this oh not on Radio Leeds on a different radio station sorry I'm always on Radio Leeds so I say that but I was on the radio talking about this and um, I get really stressed when I meet people that live in live in half a life so if your health or your fitness goals or whatever are reducing you to live in half a life we have a problem and I don't I want to stop that and nip that in the bud and this is an inner demon so I was asked about you know the scooters you know the scooters that go around when people have got bad legs and they can uh, ride a scooter yeah and um, and that's oh Debbie sent me a message I'll read that in a minute um, so they asked me what I thought about and whether people, society judged them. And I said, yeah, I think society does judge them. When people have bad legs, they often can't walk very far and maybe can't exercise and they become more inactive and then they end up uh, putting on more weight because they're not very active and it, then they might be a bit depressed and it's a downhill spiral and then they get a little scooter because it helps them get out and about. But here's the thing. Life is not just for the thin, perfect people, okay? life is for everyone and i want you to think about that when you get these inner demons surfacing life is for everyone life is for living it's not just for the people that are six foot four and a size eight that's rubbish we want you to live and life is for you and you deserve this so when that inner demon rises i want you to really think about that so debbie's been told that she can't go to the gym uh, and that she's um, got op uh, an operation in mid-May. So with this in mind, that's a physical obstacle. I know about this because my fellow Duffy has had many spinal operations. So this can affect your mind. I know it affected Duffy's mind after he had operation. He felt very down after the operation because he wasn't able to get out and do things. This is a big inner demon. And what I do is I want to give you oxygen not the demon so the biggest thing uh, for Duffy when he came out uh, of that is that I got him breathing deeply I made him breathe deeply every day I tormented him actually <laughs> I, I just tormented him we actually expel our calories when we breathe out <sighs> what do you do when you exercise <sighs> Now, nobody hyperventilate on, my, on me. We don't want that. <laughs> but people talk about losing weight when they're meditating. What are they doing? <sighs> people get great results for things, from things like yoga and Pilates. What are they doing? <sighs> yeah, 
we actually expel our calories and our fat through our oxygen, uh, our carbon dioxide going out into the air. It's a lovely little um, kind of uh, game we have with nature. All the trees and the greenery suck in the carbon dioxide, send out oxygen, and we breathe it in and send out carbon dioxide. You know, like we're really, it's a lovely little thing that we've got going on there. Right, so when you're post-op or you're struggling and being told by the doctors that you can't exercise, now is the time to be deep breathing and start off slowly. Start off with just five minutes of deep breathing. And, uh, and uh, they've just gone, you know I can't bend. <laughs> funny funny right, so uh, we know we want your deep breathing to start off with five minutes work up to 20 minutes you will get a sweat on I'm not kidding you if you think oh that's boring I can't be sat there deep breathing it's too boring then put on your favorite song and sing yeah so if you sing full out pelt Belt it, give it some wasky, right? If you sing your favourite songs for 20 minutes, you will be sweating chips. I can guarantee it, right? We used to be doing rehearsals for shows and musicals, and I used to be sweating big time because you're putting all that effort into singing, and we were sat down and sometimes just stood up. So, uh, Debbie, deep breathing or singing is the way forward for you right now. <laughs> I look forward to the videos of you singing, that's all I'm saying. Um, so for all of the, you talking about your inner demons, I want you to assess whether the inner demons of negative talk or whether the inner angels of messages that your body is trying to tell you. And, uh, and you'll be able to work with that. The people that are most successful know themselves very well. But the hardest thing in the world is facing yourself in that self mirror. So now is the time. Now is the time to do it. Um, and you know we'll just go for it go for it so I hope you're very very well I hope you liked my little live uh, talk here it's the first time I've done it um, on Facebook I've done one on a different group and I've done one on here and I love the fact that Debbie can send me little messages and stuff so get interactive it works really well uh, but I'll speak to you soon I'm gonna do this again it's worked very well so bye for now bye.